Hello. Welcome to Simply Exploring Adventuring with Lewis. And my guest, Hannah, today. Um, today we're at Columbia Crossing River, River Park. And today we're here for uh, what's being called the Columbia Railroad Day. And they also have several other events going on. And right now they're having a... Uh, um, uh, they, uh, they have like civil war events and stuff like that like going on. Like right camp. now, there's the civil war encampment right here um, with the tents and all that. Well, even he's showing you how to. Fire. He's making a fire right now. How, how they, they would have done it back then in in the civil war times. Ooh. And this gentleman right here is also was doing a. Uh, how they made the mini balls back then Those? with these molds yeah right there he just the oh and other things it's like a chess piece or something uh that is a civil war mold of a rifleman okay yeah. wow cool awesome the back of him there. yeah look at that as a civil war soldier so those wow. were mini balls the, like the, the bullets, basically. Those were the bullets. Yep. That's how they made bullets. Yep. So they're not like the bullets we have now. No. These were much more. They were ridged like that. But so, these bullets here, we shoot in competition then too. Okay. Yeah. That's what he was just saying yeah. that they do a competition. Wonder how well those bullets work. And there's the, well, very good. Yes. <laughs> I bet they were better than those <coughs> We shoot at 50 and 100 yards. Wow. Wow. They shot really far. Well. And. Just oh, to give you an idea, the damage those things would do, they would have to cut arms and legs off and stuff like that because of the damage those bullets would do. Ouch. You can see some of the ones that we had picked up from the backstop, the bullets over here. Okay. How flattened out they, they are. They are, right there. Look at that. Oh, okay. my God. Cool. And some of the targets, they hang from wire. And every wow, now and then you get one like this. Wow, look at that. Oh, interesting. Penetrated the wire. Wow. So that's what they would look like this when they hit they like something. Oh my God, and there's... this is what we dig out of the backstop to remelt and use. The okay. Again. Okay, good oh, wow, to know. Look, the smaller guns. They have, yes, they carried bayonet. They bayonet. got the bayonet right there. Oh. Yeah, this is bayonet. bayonet. They would fit, put it at the end of the rifle. So when they ran out of bullets and stuff like that, they, they had to charge. You can see them stacked over there with the bayonets yep. on them. Okay. They would, they would charge and stab the person. Well. So when you ran out of bullets, you'd use that and it kind of like. It's cool. To. That. Not quite no. what what Dad you, used when he was in the service, are but. You, are you ready for something gross? <laughs> sort of. Okay. <laughs> Prior to the Civil War, the bayonets were like a knife. Yes. Mm -hmm. Somebody invented this triangular shaped bayonet because it was harder to sew the wound up than it was a straight one. Okay, I did hear about that somewhere. Yes. The that triangular. Is interesting. Yes. Because it'd be harder to sew, sew a triangular shaped wound. Shape. My, my hearing aid. Yeah, you're right. It would be harder to. Oh, cool. um, it would be much harder to sew a triangular shaped wound right. than it would a straight one. Exactly. Which means it takes longer for the them to. So what unit is you you representing? Uh, we're 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 the Lancaster Pennsylvania. Okay. 79th Pennsylvania Volunteers. Right, that's what I was looking for. 79th and Pennsylvania. They originally were from Lancaster. Okay, wow, I didn't and know we had one. We, <laughs> I didn't know. Well, I'm from Lancaster. Well, I live in the Lancaster. Lancaster so. principals escorted Buchanan to Washington D.C. Oh wow! Awesome. Wow. That's how old. So, would you guys happen to know who, it, what unit was the one that defended the bridge before they burned it, it was, down? It was a, I, I don't know the number, but the, they were a unit from Philadelphia. Yeah, okay. They were? Okay. Wow. And they, they were 
They when were not an experienced burn? unit. 1760. It was when the burn four, bridge was right? burned? 1863. Was when the bridge was burned? June 20 something. Was when the bridge was burned? Yeah, before the battle got any burned. June 29th, I think it was in 1763. Was when the bridge was burned? Yes, I believe so. The, the so museum is right on the other side over there. They have a, a panorama museum. And the Battle of Gettysburg is right that, after, that, right? That pillar underneath the bridge is one of them with, with the, the trees on it. Yep. That was the original base. Big, the original, big, big. Uh, what, uh, yeah, the wooden bridge. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, if you notice the flag on the left there with all the names on it. Yep. Our unit was assigned to Sherman in the South. Okay. But uh, when there was a battle or an engagement, the commanders would send a report back to the War Department. Okay. If we were engaged, the War Department would give us permission to put the name on the flag. Oh. So all the names on the flag there are, are battles that we're, we were actually in the fighting. Now, nowadays we, they use streamers because when yes. I was in the service, um, we would they would put a streamer on the flag for any engagement you were in. Exactly. So, but the, back then you see how the names are written on the actual stripes, Hannah. Yeah. That's the uh, in, where well, the battles they actually fought. They my, my, they were like he was saying uh, wow. authorized by the War Department to put it on the actual I, battle I, flag. I, I tell people a lie every now and then. What's that? <laughs> Well, my last name's Hoover. Okay. And that Hoover's gap on the flag there is named after me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. Yo, how big is your salute for? Is that 69? That's 69, but I, I shoot a 6, 7, 8 ball out of it. Okay. Oh, okay. 6, 7, 8. And the, the idea of the smooth board is to go right from the center. Mm -hmm. This is the variety of different weapons they would have actually carried during the Civil War by different makers. Whereas this one is just the right size. This one expands, I would be in the right. Right, yeah. Okay. A pistol. Is that a Colt pistol? <coughs> Pardon? Is well, that a Colt pistol? The black uh, one? Just a minute, he's taking out. pictures. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I'm not, I'm not sure what, what it is. Uh, <coughs> yeah. Oh, hold on, I'm trying to find out what kind of weapon this is. Oh, they disappeared. I'm not sure. <laughs> Usually the makers. Brand well, it's, it's, a repro it's a reproduction. Oh, okay. reproduction. It's a reproduction. Okay. It's not a Remington. Okay. So that's why I was wondering if it was a, if it was a Colt. It's not a Remington or it's not a Colt. Okay. But I can't, I can't tell you what it is. Art. 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 Hold on. Oh! No. <laughs> He's like, no. Hard tack. It's bread, yeah, back in the days. Yeah. It's not really that hard, but yeah, not now. Now, but it would get real really hard. Oh yeah. You want it's to called hard tack because they can carry it for days and days and days, yeah. and they would survive on you this stuff. You want to try one? They were rationed that all the time. Oh yeah, all the time. Oh my yep. god. And they um, they called it uh, two dollars because of, I'm telling you, it get so hard. So they hard. Break it or soak it in your coffee oh, wow. to be able to eat it, or they call it um, worm castles. Ah uh, yes, I've heard that term. Flour that they made it out of had worms in it. Isn't it? Yes. So when they would soak it in their coffee, the worms would, you know, come up and out of the I, top. But they drink it anyway because it would give them protein. She's a I, senior in high school, I, so I'm still trying to oh, yeah. teach, get her to I, learn about our history. I, I, I read a letter. I read a letter that a, um, a soldier Have sent home to family. No. And he said he had, the only meat he had this week was in the heart tax because of the worms in the heart yeah. tax. Oh, yeah. yes. This is a star revolver. Okay. Thank you. May I try that, ma'am? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That's actually really good. Well, now it is. Wait till it gets hard as a rock. <laughs> a rock, yeah. It was, it was much tall. harder to eat then. And she just gave me a... 
oh, well. piece of hardtack. Which is basically it's their what bread they back in the Army Civil War bread. days. <laughs> Army bread. And I'm going to flip this around so you can see me eating it. Here we go. We're going to try some modern day hardtack, but it's the recipe hasn't changed in over 150 years. Except they had worms in the original. So it says they had worms in the original oh. time. I mean, worms are bugs and they gave me protein, but that sounds gross. <laughs> Eating worms sounds gross. I don't think I would ever eat them. I, I know bugs give Tastes you like bread today, you know, almost. Bread covers and other bugs, they give you protein, but I don't and think all she I would said ever it was just eat a bug in my life. Flour, water, salt. And what else? They said flour, water, salt, and what? And, uh, and baking soda. soda. Okay. It's actually really good. Okay. It's maybe modern day. Although they, they complained a lot about it. Tasting. Back in the days. Uh, because in it the Civil War days about tasted, eating this almost every day. Because it tastes so plain. Yeah. They didn't have peanut butter and jelly and stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, it's plain, so you're going to... It's not bad, though. Awesome that you so get to tackle it. So they would cook stuff in cans like that. So they would cook stuff in like a cast iron pan like that. Well, by the time you see this, I won't. I'm not doing this live. I'm going to be doing this as an upload in a future episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not too bad. I know. I'm talking with my mouth. That's a good thing to part is because it uses water, so... No, but I mean, they had canteens of water, that's what the other had. She's beginning to prepare to make mush muffins. Which was basically so, made of Which corn made a cornmeal. Corn wow. And it had sugar in it, so it was a little bit sweeter. Almost lost your flower there. <laughs> oh, she has already dough oh, yeah. made up ahead. And as she explained before I so turned on made, the camera, the this is not something they would have had all the time because they have would have had to prepare this ahead of time and let this dough rise and stuff, as so she had explained. So would just eat that. Yeah, hard more tack, hard. it was a so basically rationed. were basically more rare. So it's kind of like a, so it's kind of yes. more like a treat to them. Sometimes yes. they would bring it out yes. to them. So it, the mush muffins were kind of more like a treat to the to the cult. Yeah, because they wouldn't get the office. Right. Wow. Um, if if they were in camp, um, between skirmishes. Um, And right now, um, they have this little fire going right now because I guess I guess she's gonna make that mush muffins in the, the pan. The pan now, like they would have done. Like they would have done in the back in the days too, in their Civil War days. Get a picture of that. Look at that pan. Get a picture of her preparing stuff. There's our little fire going. The Lancaster, like the gentleman, I asked what unit he was representing. He said the Lancaster Fest Fencibles, um, the 79th Regiment, I believe. Pennsylvania Volunteer Infantry, actually. That's what PVI stands for. Um, and he mentioned that they also escorted um, President Buchanan here back in those days so that that even pre-civil war 
And up there, I met, failed to mention, they are doing, um, oh, what do you call it? Um, you know, talks and stuff like that. Different things about the Civil War and railroad history here as well. Um, but mostly it's Civil War related. So, and as you see, the, two, the three gentlemen there. Potatoes. Potatoes. <laughs> potatoes. That's okay. They did have a lot of good fruits and vegetables. Yeah. Because without wow. fruits and vegetables, Now that would have that been an actual serving size or something like that for what they would have done or maybe bigger. Yeah, it's me. Oh, it's just <laughs> you doing it. Okay, I didn't know if. You can use donut cutters to make them into triangles. So whatever they would have had at hand right. during those times. Okay. Say, like, no, I was just making sure. You know, if, if Sometimes can, people do say, things all the way to yeah, authenticity. But obviously <laughs> they didn't. But if they didn't really have much on hand like what you did, that's probably as close as they'd be able to. Oh wow, look, the butter's melting. It's onto one side already. Yep. Most of it is because it's probably the way the the, the bars are right now. So it wants to go to one side. I noticed the and this grass is on a slight slope too. Okay. So that's what kind of. Oh wow, awesome. That, they would, that was like the kind of like spatula they would use. Exactly. Yep. So it was like a metal. Well, all oh, metal back iron. then, yeah. Iron. Iron. Was, iron would have been the. So iron was more. Most things were made out of iron. Iron back then. Back then, not more much steel. Steel was. wasn't until steel much wasn't later. Until, so back then they would mostly use iron because it was one of the many metals. Steel was they closer had. to early, late 1900s, early, oh, wow. early 1800s, early 1900s. Okay, now she's in the process of frying the. What did you call them? The corn what? The <laughs> corn mush muffins. Mush, mush muffins. I remember so easily. Now these are not. This is just her variation of it. Not the actual. But she was mentioned that back then it's they, whatever kind of cutter they would have had at the time. If they didn't have any to cutters. Make this, then they would just cut them by hand like if that. If they didn't have any cutters, then that's what they would just do. To do it, yeah. Just cut the piece of the... the, the the corn meal. Yep, see that's all they have to do now. Oh, he's lowering it down to get closer to the heat. Cool. That's what they would have done. Right there would be good. Thank you. She got a picture of her like that too. I like how she's still I like how she's it's in Harrisburg. Okay. That's the one that's uh I'm going there next. <laughs> Soon this this at the Capitol Preservation. Okay. Center, oh, have, I thought you meant the National, well, uh, the Civil, National War Museum. Museum. Okay. Yeah, you're in Harrisburg. Oh, those things took quickly. You have a chance to spend time because it takes time. Yeah. But at the Capitol Preservation Center, they have the original battle flags from the units from Pennsylvania. Okay. The 79th original flag is there. All right. Oh, wow. This one replicates the second one that was given to them when they were coming out of Georgia. Okay. Okay. Because after that battle, 79th re enlisted as a regiment. Okay. What they cooking? I don't know, but it's warm. <clears throat> oh, yeah. yeah. Like they said, we had it uh, back in replica. I'm at the mission to look exactly like that flag up there. It carries all the battles and uh, campaigns at the yeah, the other gentleman was explaining to me, the one at that table, about about the different um, engagements they were in. And then he also mentioned that uh, they protected uh, President Buchanan well, as well. The fensibles did. Because they're so small. They cook so quickly because of how small they are. Yep.
<laughs> kind of looks like a pancake now. <laughs> like little mini pancakes. <laughs> Making lunch for them. Mush muffin. Mush muffin. I see why they call them mush muffins because you had to make it and use the water and come out and make it into a like mush. So you said you added what else? Milk and sugar. Milk, sugar, and cornmeal. Butter? Butter. No, no, butter to cook it in. Butter to cook it in. They would have not had butter. They probably would have had some, some type of animal fat. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Field, yeah. I'm pretty sure they would use animal fat or something if they couldn't reach butter. Animal fat, animal fat would cook. So animal fat. But when they were encamped, they would just other use place, probably, yeah. They'd probably just use like animal fat. Mm. So animal fat, that sure smells good. Lard or something like that. Like lard or. So basically, it would cook kind of like butter. There's the 30th regiment flag right there. There's some Civil War reenactors as well. Depends on the fire. So the bigger the fire, the more. Well, I'm sure it. I'm sure it would have been probably just about this size. Probably. I mean, like they said, like she said, that you could, if they had cookie cutters, they'd probably make them bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Well, whatever size they wanted to, but when you don't have cookie cutters, then sometimes you have to just do what you Cut them up do. a little bit and just stuff. Cut them up a little bit like she did. Like, she cut them up into little squares. Make them, like, bite size. That way you can just pop it right into your mouth. And... Um, I was, I was here... For something else, and I saw the sign inside, oh, okay. inside the Columbia Crossing. Oh, okay. Yeah, a couple of uh, I think I was like about here about a month ago. But there is advertisements for it too. Hard tack? Hard tack. Well, whatever. I don't know. I'm not sure. No, uh, take long at all to make but they get really hard. And but they get really hard easily. Bake them 20, 20, minutes. 20 minutes bake. But they get really hard when you leave them all out. At about what temperature? Uh, 450. 450. Now we know what to do if we want to make some ourselves. Mm -hmm. it, all it is is just what? Flour. Flour, water. Flour, water, and what? Yeah, right. I, I've been to Terry Hill's wife. Oh, wait, so the card has used... And baking soda, sorry. Baking soda. So it's I knew there was a fourth one. So, so water, flour, and... Baking soda. Baking soda. Just three ingredients? I mean, if we had baking soda, we could probably make it ourselves. Online, okay. We do have water and flour, but we don't have any baking yes, soda. Yes, I do have baking wait, soda. Do. I just bought three boxes. We can make two, soda. Two, one for the freezer, one for the we fridge. Can, we can make soda. And then a separate box for baking, just you in case. You want to make some <laughs> Oh, <attack. laughs> why? Because? <laughs> we have plenty of bread that we got to use up first. <laughs> we don't have to make a lot. We could just make it like I know, like a small that. batch. A small batch like that. It actually kind of tastes interesting. I would just add a little salt to it just to give it a little That's bit what you more said. Slight she added salt, salt to it. it. It also has salt. And she made the first batch there, but she's she's making, she's batch. making it for them, so uh, I don't know if we'll be able to try. get a sample of it. But we, she told us what we hit, what we needed to make anyway for it. So what were all the ingredients for? Cornmeal. Cornmeal. Water. Water. Sugar. sugar milk. Uh, no, not milk. No? Water. No? For the for the for the mush muffins. I'm talking for the mush muffins. Oh. You said milk? Corn cornmeal water? Cornmeal water you make the mush. Right. Or milk. Milk, okay. Warm and sugar. Yeast. Yeast. Yeah, and then you add a flour, so you make it into a dough. Okay. 
So if you had to make it, you would make it in the morning. That way it could rise overnight. So you'd have to make it like early in the afternoon. Or early in the morning, or whenever. Early in the morning, that way. That's interesting. I see some gentleman dressed in a lighter blue outfit. Captain. A captain. Two bars on the top of his shoulder are the captain bars. He's got, he's got his saber. Ah. Sword. Saber. Only officers carry that. What? Only the officers usually carry this. Wait, so only officers carry their saber? Sword, sure. Uh, yeah, captain? he's a captain. Also. Oh, wow. I see the double bars on the top. So. Ah, I see. That's the same. Double bars are the same as today, yeah. See, it's still, yeah, not, that hasn't changed much in no, army history. It hasn't changed much in, like, how many years? <laughs> now, in the Navy, that would only be a lieutenant, I believe. I think you're right. Yes. They, they wow. To, they don't know how to do rank in the Navy. <laughs> they don't. I think he's showing them how to stack arms. That's what they do. They're, that's when they call the order to do a stack arms, as they call it. Ah. You know your history. Yes. I like yeah. the Civil War a lot. I mean, I'm not super, and I was in the military myself, so. Army. So. Yeah, we got a lot of ex-army guys in our group. Yep. Usually they are. My they God. like being the reenactors and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Carry on the tradition somewhere. Marksman's badge. That's a mo he's got on his chest. No, that's a core badge. Oh, that's a core badge. Fifth core badge. Wow, it looks just like the uh, third, the, the third modern. Division, third division, fifth core. Oh wow. Well, actually, if you look at it, it's, it's a part, it is part of the marksmanship that we took because the core badge is the same thing. Okay. They just take the bottom, take the one part off, but paint it blue for third for third core. Okay. For third division. Did not know so that. They three, three divisions per core. The one, one was, the first division was red. White, blue. blue. Okay. We're second, third divisions. Okay. We're third division, fifth corps. Okay. But <laughs> it looks just like a march membership for bad from the military General today. Hooker, that's what General Hooker. Hooker. Was Maltese, General Hooker okay. uh, did that when he took over the Army of the Potomac. He made four badges. He okay. Made, he's on symbol for each corps. Like the first corps was a circle. Okay. I think the second corps was a clover. Like a clover. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Third corps with a diamond. I've seen that one. There was no fourth corps. <laughs> that was. Fifth corps was this, the Maltese cross. Sixth corps was a cross, but it was not. It was like the red cross, and it only wasn't. It's like the cross they used for the red cross. Okay. Regular, regular. Red. Plus sign. Yeah. Plus sign. Okay. And they were always red, white, and blue. Regardless of corps, it was always red, white, and blue for the divisions. Okay. Wasn't sure about all that have, stuff. Had the twelfth corps. Okay. Twelfth corps was a, was a crescent moon. That. I also noticed the flag, the way it looks, the horses on that. Well, that, that's a Pennsylvania. That's, that's a Pennsylvania. That's an American flag, but it's a Pennsylvania regiment. Ah. Yeah, the 30th. It's, Pennsylvania, it's Pennsylvania's emblem in the middle of the blue field. Oh, right. Wow. If you look at our state flag, it has it on our state flag. <laughs> Pennsylvania, yeah, Pennsylvania regiments all had the all had the Pennsylvania seal on the blue okay. field. Oh, wow. Okay. That one's our. That one says 30th Pennsylvania Infantry, First PA Reserves. Okay. That's who we are. Oh, okay. Now, that's the second flag. Our, our, and during the war, we had two flags. The first one had the had 30th Pennsylvania Infantry in one corps and one and one red stripe. First Pennsylvania Reserves in the second stripe. Okay. But after Gettysburg was so badly shot up, they retired that flag. They got this for a substitute with everything on one stripe. Now we have our unit has both flags. Okay. That's the second one. Uh, no, he he was the mentioning that th theirs is in Harrisburg. Is yours in Harrisburg too? In Harrisburg, yeah. Okay. But that's a, that's all silk. That is, that's where they that silk the star. Oh and wow. They're all hand painted. The stars are hand painted. The Pennsylvania seal is all hand painted. Oh wow. Awesome. I probably run to, to, to about a thousand bucks if we were to replace it. Okay. 
Nice. Honestly. So you got the ribbons on top too, the, hanging well, off those of are it. Post war, they put the uh, they put on their. Uh, they put it just like here. This, this, that's how they did it during the war. They yeah. Put their, their, we didn't, but, but at the after after the war, they for the like the Grand Review or whatever they put they, they got streamers for all our battles. There were streamers. Yeah. So they they would not have been period during the war. They'd have been post war. Okay. That would have been the way they did it. Then as he's as he mentioned. During the actual Civil War times. the same thing. They painted theirs on theirs. Their battles, too. I see it says Marietta. Georgia. Marietta, Georgia, yeah. Savannah, Raleigh. They must have, they must have been with, with Sherman's army. Yes. Or we were the army of the Potomac. Okay. Yeah, he didn't mention they were with Sherman. Chapel Hill. Yeah, so they, they would have been all the southern campaigns. Yeah. Up through, up through Atlanta, Atlanta, yeah. Atlanta, you know, all that. Yeah. Peach tree. Yep. Sweden there. something. It says Sweden something, but I can't so read it. It could have been even a small engagement. You know, yeah. Like, you know, so. Even the minor skirmishes were, yeah. were still <laughs> credited to their yeah. to each unit and stuff. That's a dog tag. Yes. It's called a dog tag. Each soldier carried half of one of those. And when they, when they stopped for the night to camp, they'd find their buddy and they'd button the two halves together and find wood to make put it up with. Oh, wow. Or they could use their rifles. They could take the bayonet, stick the rifle bayonet into the ground, and stick a rope from the trigger guards and throw the tent over the, over the rope. Wow. It's funny how a lot hasn't... Couldn't, couldn't find wood. It's funny how a lot hasn't, hasn't changed because he said that it would take two people to... Oh, you did one soldier just carry everything? The, but, the tent button's in half. Okay. Each soldier carries half. Half, like we did in the military. Or you oh, can, wow. And you can put it up for our lean to also. You guys yes. Were doing it in the yep, we had so buddies. So, yeah. so when will we get on they're the called, trolley? They, call, they, they eventually Don't became known as pup tents. Pup tents, yeah. And still. This period they're called dog tents. Tanks. Okay. Wow. The saying was that they weren't fit for a dog to live in. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, they are small enough for a dog to That's what they would be marching in. That's their marching tent. When they're on the move, that's what they're using. Yeah. I mean, they're it not, does look. not carrying these around. I mean, it does look small enough for like a German shepherd or some small dog. So you stick out one under the other, stick that, yeah. Mm -hmm. It is small enough for a dog Those to sleep come up, each, each regiment, each, each regiment had wagons and things like that. They'd come up on wagons. They'd be for a more permanent camp. That'd be wow. officers only. Only, yeah. Oh, wow. So only officers say. would be in tents In tents, like yes. Now, the rest of it, there's none here, but there's a thing called a, an A tent, which is bigger than that. It's one piece, and it comes to us like that. A wedge tent or an A tent. That's, they would use those in long-term camps, too. But, on the move, that's what they carry. Okay, yep. I mean, if you're on the move, you need to get it. You need to take down yeah, that when, as yeah. quick as possible, mm -hmm. so you can set up somewhere else. Officers yeah. would have these tents coming in wagons, or, or depending on rank, they would take over a house. They'd move into a house. Someone, oh wow! They'd move a family out of the house. So, yep. Yeah. They were like, "Yep, yeah, we're kicking this you out." Headquarters. Headquarters. Yeah. Well, you can live in another part of the house. We're taking over part of your house. Wow. If you were the enemy, they'd take you get out, get out of the house from the enemy. If you were in, like if they go, if they take over a house in the south, they make the family get out. Yeah. You know? Well, even here they up in the north. So they leave, and they can come back again. Because I know uh, in Gettysburg, they took over several. The yeah. Confederates took over yeah. several houses yeah. right next to the Jenny Wade house. While they were there, yeah. Yeah, while well, they were there. Wow. Yeah. How do you know that? I read a little yeah, he's, Civil he's, War he's, stuff. He's, 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 Ex Army. Right yeah. I mean, my dad is serving the army. Not that that has anything to do with it. They do sh teach us some stuff, yeah. but you have to look into a lot of Civil War stuff. So I was always really fascinated by this war. By the Civil War. Yes. I've I've been up to Gettysburg, but it was when you, when your sister was like a year and a half, two years old. Go so I got to go rifles. back again. Those rifles are single shot. Yeah, they fire one bullet. Mm -hmm. oh. And you got to reload. Yep. Then they carried this here. Feel that? Mm -hmm. That's what they carried with them. It's 40 rounds of ammunition. Oh my God, that's heavy. That's 40 wow. rounds of ammunition. That's heavy. Okay. Feel how heavy this is. Mm. Wow. That's that does have some weight. With. That's heavy. It that does have in. some weight. I wonder how they cartridges. How do you guys manage to carry yep, all of that? Those are cartridges. That was the cartridges. Mm -hmm. your bullet, there's your bullet. Yeah. Here's your gunpowder. Yeah. What you do is you take the rifle, you set it up on the butt like that. You put it in your mouth, you tear it off with your teeth, dump the gunpowder down the barrel, and you put the bullet in. And underneath the barrel... The gunpowder will help the bullet. 
travel that's what further. Makes the, well, that's what makes the bullet go. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and you take this thing called a, under the barrel is a thing called a ramrod. You take mm. a ramrod out mm -hmm. and you push the bullet all the way to the back. Ah. Because the bullet just stays in the tip on the tip. I believe you got to push it all the way back. Did talk about that in history class. Then you replace times. your then you replace the ramrod and you cock mm -hmm. the hammer half cock and they mm -hmm. pull it in their little pouch here. They have, in their thing they have a cap pouch. Uh, I believe in the history in my history books they did talk about that how they would load the guns. Oh. It's a cap pouch. Okay, and right there. Percussion caps. Okay. He puts them one of those under the hammer. Yeah. Okay. They're little little brass caps look like they call them Lincoln hats. Yeah. They look like look like a top hat. Anyway, you put you put the you put the cap on there, and then you then you when you bring the rifle up to shoot, you have to pull the hammer back all the way. Oh. Then when you pull the trigger, the hammer comes down, it hits the cap, the cap pops, sends a spark down, it sends a spark down into the gun, mm -hmm. that sets off the gunpowder, and that shoots the bullet out. Ah. Then you reload the whole thing over again. Oh, but that took a really long process. Uh, it, it, the soldiers could. Usually a trained soldier can fire three rounds a minute. A minute. I thought three so. Rounds. Every 20 seconds. Yep. That's what a percussion cap looks like. Yeah, right see though, he's talking wow. about the Lincoln hat. That's the cap. And they can't put, there's two, Once the ten, strike's that, that's 10, what. There's 20, and down below there's 20, there's 30, 40. There's two, there's two tins down here, and they each have 10 more rounds in them. So wow. I've got 40 rounds in here. Okay. Wow. I mean, you did want to have to carry a lot because you don't want to run out of bullets. And you probably had more on your on your person somewhere else. So if you go through, if a big battle, you could go through these. But also, wow. if a guy, if soldiers get around to get hit, you can take some of their equipment too. If you Obviously. take the Confederate line, they've got the same ammunition probably you do. If you could take their ammunition, if you needed more. Nigga, they wow. supplied both sides. Oh wow! Until eventually we would cut them off, and then they'd have to figure out how to get their own supplies too. I mean, we did burn the bridge. I mean, I wonder how long it took that bridge to burn. I think they said six hours, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I'm not sure. About six what hours. So yeah. How about that bridge? I think it was like six I mean, hours. The bridge, if you think about it, from here all the way down there, it's pretty. It was a mile long. It was the longest wooden bridge in the world at the time. Like carry wagons, Only if it still foot soldier, existed. foot people, people are walking, people are mm -hmm. or trains. Only if as that well, wooden yeah. bridge still existed. They, they burned the Confederates for that side of the river. Yep. I mean, they, we had, they had to stop them from coming on the other side. Yeah, because if they would have gone up that way, they would have gone to Harrisburg and, and they captured Harrisburg. Oof. Yeah, they were across the river. They were in Wrightsville, the yep. Confederates. All the way down the right across side. the river there. Yep. So we they actually have... helped put the fire, tried to put the fire, fire out. out. <laughs> the fire spread to the town. They helped put some of the houses out. out. Yep. Oh wow. I read that part too. I did not know that. This is an officer's pistol. This is a 44 caliber Remington. Oh, this you got the, the Remington. Thing that. You got to put your put your powder in here. Mm -hmm. Put your bullet in here. And this is your ramrod. Mm -hmm. Right there, you pulled it out. You got to ram each chamber. Spin the pen, ram each, then you put. I put a cap on here, and you had a cock it every time you fired it. There's nothing in it. No, <laughs> he's just you showing. Can't, you can't do cowboy westerns like this. Yeah. Not yet. This is not this double action. So you can still dry and fire these. Two. Not let the cowboy type type. Guns and the range in these is very. I mean, uh, you can hit what you're shooting at maybe at 40 yards. Oh wow. Wow. Where these are 300 yards, the back you can hit for 300 yards. They can go further, but you can be fairly active at 300 yards. It's kind of still kind of a smart, but then it has a more triangular well, shape. Well, that's because the wounds were harder to pick than here. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and they were uh, talking about that. Uh, but by this time of the war, it would be guns, harder to stitch up. The but they were a, they were a throwback to the Revolutionary War because in the Revolutionary oh, War wow. they used smooth bore. These are rifles. The bullets will go further. Ah. Smooth bore in the Revolutionary War they used smooth bores. Which means they didn't have as much range and they used a round ball. And if you could hit with there, if you were shooting at 100 yards, you could hit, you could hit your target. But, but more than 100 yards, you probably couldn't. At least these ones were much better That's than That's right. So, but, but because of that reason, hardly used bayonets because in the Revolutionary War, they'd get real close and they'd try bayonet charges. And here you're too far away. By the time you do launch a bayonet charge, you're cut to pieces by the time you get to the enemy. Uh, they use those for candle holders. Put them in the ground to just stick a candle on the other end. At nighttime, you have light. That's actually kind of smart. 
like Civil War soldiers with modern <laughs> cell phones. Put the picture in black and white and, <laughs> and they'll look like Civil War soldiers with, with modern cell phones and post it on the internet and be like, hey, look, we found our old picture. <laughs> yeah, that's what the guys, the soldier in the march would carry. What's okay. in that tent? Yep. In your canteen, your haversack, there's a, it's a, it's a canvas sack. Mm -hmm. Carry all your stuff in there, your food, your tobacco, whatever you want. You have your blanket there. And your rifle in your, in your cartridge box. And that's it. Now, if you need water for your canteen, go to the river and fill it up. Mm -hmm. Ah, I see. They, or they, or they, a local stream or something, anywhere, I'm sure. If water looked clear, they assumed it was good to drink. They, yep. didn't, they had no concept of germ. They didn't know what caused sickness. They didn't know water was polluted. So they didn't know that they needed you could, they to go there and the fill up their canteens. They didn't know they needed to filter the water. Right, exactly. They had no they idea. They drink whatever they could. And they didn't know why they were getting sick. <laughs> Uh, More people in the sewer died of illness than died from water. Because of water. Because of illnesses. They had no cures. They had no cures. Diarrhea could kill. Wow. Smallpox could I kill. I know diarrhea could kill. Measles could kill. Yeah. I know diarrhea could kill. Measles. No immunization in those days no either. I mean, now we have immunization for when they, when they took a bullet out of you, they didn't, ster they didn't sterilize the equipment. They didn't know what sterilization meant. Uh, yep. They would just think, take the bullet out. Wipe off the, their blood and their all that stuff on, your, on their aprons, and they move on to the, the next guy. guy. Yeah. And if you got infected, they didn't know why. Wow. They didn't know why you got infected. They didn't know why you died. That's why they started amputating. They found they could save, save lives. If you got shot in the leg, if they amputated you, if they amputated you, the better you had a better chance of surviving. So if you got shot in the leg, bye bye your leg. Well, on it, arm or whatever. Always. It depends how These bad bones, it was. If they used could shatter bone. If bones, the bone shattered, yeah. they couldn't fix it. Yep. But if it didn't hit a bone area, like they could, bye then bye they your could, leg. If they didn't hit a bone, if it didn't wound, they probably wouldn't take your leg off. What? They took your chance that you wouldn't get infected, but they probably wouldn't take your if leg off. If your leg got infected, they'd have to They'd just clean their equipment off on their aprons. Wow. Wipe the blood off on their aprons. Oof. They had no idea what caused sickness. No idea. Yep. At least now we do know. They call it, they call it miasmic mist. Yeah, some kind of, that's what, that's what caused malaria. It wasn't mosquitoes, it was miasmic mm. mist. Miasmic mist. So, so it's not mosquitoes. Mosquitoes don't really... Wait. The same mosquitoes cause malaria now. Mm -hmm. But they didn't know that. They call it miasmic mist. That, that was one of the illness, one of their names for it. Oh, okay. They oh, couldn't wow. understand. Yep. Wow, I didn't know that. I always wonder why they didn't know how what caused them to get sicknesses. I mean, obviously, most people think, oh, water's clear, it's drinkable. Nope. You better filter the water if you want to drink out of that. Yeah. Nowadays, they carry, you know, tablets that fill, you fill, well, at least in World War II, I'm not sure what they do now, but in yeah. World War II, they carried, they had, they had purification pills. Not yes. Boy Scouts. Oh, had wow. Pills, a bottle filled to put the lemon in the water. Up. And it purify the water. Yeah. Kill the, kill the bacteria. Kill the bacteria. So you could drink it and not right. get Alizone tablets we had in yep. when I was in Scouts. Wow. I heard even in Vietnam they would use them too. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. They would wow. still use those tabs. I didn't know that. Something like iodine or something like that sometimes mm -hmm. I think they would use to purify it. I mean, there's plenty of things to see going on. It looks yeah. like they have food in there. Thank you for all the information, sure. sir. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. I mean, they have food Let's and stuff. See what my stuff buddy's over doing there. over here. Oh. Record this a little bit. Well, <laughs> folks, um, unbeknownst to me, when uh, one of the other women were talking to this gentleman right here, turns out we know each other because we've served together in the Pennsylvania National Guard, and he was a sergeant. First name Lewis, right? Yes. Yep. I also remember it. Yep. I didn't know that was your wife. I was like, yeah, okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I yeah, so we did serve together when I was in the Pennsylvania National Guard, not too far from here. Oh it's now uh, they turned it into uh, a into a recreational center now. So what's being made in the big pot? Probably sometimes like stew and stuff like that. Stew? Yeah. So they're probably gonna be like having like much like corn. Yeah. So corn I happened to stew. listen to a 
uh, two other women while we were talking to the the captain uh, a little bit ago, and I heard him. I've heard them mention his first name, and when as soon as I heard the first name, and I heard the voice again, I recognized his voice because it was like close when I first was talking with him, and I wasn't sure, and he remembered who I was because I was the cook at the time. You were the cook at the time. Yeah, you're the first one I've seen in a long time since since the unit went moved over to Hanover. Yeah, I can't. I'm trying to think who I might have talked to lately. Uh, who else used to live here in town? I forgot. Bill Wartman. Wartman. Uh, my brother's a member of the unit. Okay. He was there for a little bit. You were there when he was there. He was? He, but then he moved on. Okay. Uh, he was a uh, sergeant best. Okay, the other best. Yeah. She's making. <laughs> and it was Denny best. Yeah. Okay. She's he making split pea soup in the Okay. Room. There wasn't any relation there. Okay. She says she's making split pea soup. Was one, was it? Petroselli was the our captain, the last captain we had, right? Have you ever? Petroselli. I think it was. Uh, our last commanding officer. I thought the last one we had was. Uh, the guy that owned the wine the winery. Yeah. Make it for mine, Father. She says she's making uh, split pieces. You remember? She's making uh, the pot. Andrioli. Have you ever had? Andrioli. No. Andrioli. Andrioli, yeah. Andrioli. Yeah. yeah. And after ever? him was. Uh, uh, I forgot Andrioli. Andrioli came in right, right a little bit before I left. Okay. Yeah, he was our commanding officer then, okay. uh, and now and then I um, ETSed that same year when he when Andrioli became our commander. But we were still here in Colombia. We we hadn't been transferred over to Hanover yet. Marcus Ruff. Ruff. Ah. He was later. Yes. Uh, and after that, we had a. Uh, Tony Fry. Okay, I remember Captain Fry. Yeah. Then he became Major Fry. Yep. I remember when he, when I was still in, he was Major Fry. Okay. Yeah. So, but I, I have seen any people. Okay. I'll have half of yours. <laughs> All right, that's fine. Okay. She's making split pea soup on the, in the pot. Dad, Dad. She says she's making split, split. Split pea soup. Okay. No, I've had split pea too. Does it taste good? You remember? Split pea soup. Um, oh, I don't say, I never forget, never forget pea soup. When I saw this coming earlier. Hey, that's my sleeve. Special is Alejandro. Yes, yes. How many years were you in? Twelve. Oh, okay. And were they all with uh, Company C? Um, three with. It was nine with uh, battery battery C and three years in, in the reserve. Oh, okay. Because I transferred from New York. Do you like split? split and moved over here, Pennsylvania, and then. Uh, I did my remaining time from my first enlistment in the uh, Army Reserve, and I finished the remaining three on there, and then I re-upped for six more. And then since I couldn't pass my PT test, I wasn't trying to stay in any longer. I didn't want to be a, a career E4. That's the hardest thing, isn't it, passing that test? Yeah. He would struggle The run, it was what killed me always. But I was a smoker at the time too, so it didn't help. Uh, you gave it up? Yep. Right? When she was born, I gave it up. This is my, my youngest. She's 18 now. Oh. Now, are you in uh, Columbia High School? No, she, we're in, we live in Lancaster, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. So which one? McCaskey, McCaskey yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So are you uh, senior? Senior. Are you in school? Or are you yes. I'm in school. I'm, I'm graduating this year. So you, you've been vaccinated? 
No. no. That's what they were saying, but and I signed her up for the first shot, but I don't know if she ever went in f where for it. I don't think I did. Uh oh, so you better let them know. See if they have any other dates. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to take you to that. I am. I got both you shots could already. Just take so. me over there. Yeah, I don't I got, want. Huh? Ah, uh, I had just a little bit of a I mean, mild you headache. Could just take me and, to, uh, there, to the um, place instead of pretty much uh, fatigue. I mean, so I, that's you what could, I experienced could, both times. You could just take me there and do it instead of me. But going they were offering it right there at your school. That's why I was trying to tell you on Wednesday that I signed you up for. They said they were supposed to call you and let you know what, what, what time you were supposed to go. I hope you're still not recording. Yes, I'm still recording. Sorry. <laughs> but wow. I know you could just edit. What a part. small co coincidence that. Uh, when, when, when I heard the voice, I was like, damn, it sounds familiar. And then when the, I heard the ladies mention his name, I was like, oh, I know who he is. Now again, I said, let me ask his, his last name, I said. and Wow. So you guys Are you still in Colombia here, Art? Yeah. 